Hello everybody! Right, something very weird for you now, very weird indeed. We're in a place called... Ruffham. Ruffham! <laughs> you got it right, we're in Ruffham. <laughs> Ruffham it's, it's, it's spelt and I presume pronounced. Now, how many people have heard of a haunted house? Have you? Yeah. Yeah, everyone's heard of a haunted house. But have you ever heard of a house which is the actual apparition, which is the ghost? A ghost which disappears. A house ghost. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a house which is like a spectre. It's a mirage. It's, it's not really there. It comes and goes. Woo! Yeah, well, that's what this is. Okay, so this story starts in 1926. Well, it starts before then, but I'm starting in 1926. There was a teacher, okay, called Mrs. Wynn, or Miss Wynn. And she lived in the village down there, which is Ruffham. And she wanted, she'd just moved into the area and she'd done a bit of exploring around with one of her pupils. She was a teacher. She used to go out after school on afternoons with a 10 year old little girl, exploring. Now, you wouldn't get away with that in this day and age, just going around with a random pupil on your own. That's bang out of order. You can't get away with that anymore. In them days, it were normal. And she used to do this regularly, just exploring. And one day she decided she wanted to explore the church. She wanted to go to the church in the neighbouring village, which is about a mile walk. So they set up this road, which is called something, can't remember. Kings Hall Street, Kings Hall Street. Um, she was coming up here. Now, I'll have to explain from her notes, this is her actual account of what, what she said happened. So they're walking up the road and they see some big iron gates, okay? And from the iron gates, there's like a road leading up. So they're looking through there and there's some trees in the background and she notices this beautiful house, beautiful Georgian house. So it's an old house, big three stories, massive windows, really big windows. They were like that by that tall, massive windows. And it had a lovely garden. And beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And she was talking to a little 10 year old pupil who should be at home with a family, really, not hanging around with a teacher after school. That's just wrong. Yeah, but something's going on there, isn't it? You just don't do that, not in this day and age. Anyway, she's having a good chat. She's saying, Oh, that's a lovely house, isn't it? She says, Yeah, it's lovely. I've never noticed that before. She says, uh, Oh, well, we'll have a better look of it when we come back. Let's go to church, have a look at the church, and then we'll have a look on his way back. So they did. They forgot to have a look on the way back, but in spring, they decided to do the same thing. Remember that, uh, that, that house, what were there? Let's go have a look at that house. So it's spring, I think it was February, uh, coming back up the lane to look at this house. There's no iron gates. There's not a drive. There's not even a Georgian house in the trees. Where the hell is this house? They're looking a bit closer and thinking, well, maybe they knocked it down. They hadn't knocked it down. It was really overgrown. They examined it. They were like a big bog in the middle of where the house was. And it were all overgrown and thought, no, nothing's ever been here. That is just really, really weird. Where's the house gone? So they eventually reported this to some guy called Ernest who wrote a book in 1938 called Apparitions and Haunted Houses and he put this story in there which got a lot of people wanting to investigate this house. So in the 1970s a local historian looked into the case. He was a historian and he was also a bit of a scientific thinking kind of guy and he was looking at uh, reasonable reasons why there might be this house in why she might have seen this house. And one thing he's thinking of is a mirage. Was it a mirage? Now, he thought, mirages, it's a bit big for a mirage. Mirages aren't usually the size of a house. And for it to be a mirage, there would have to actually be a house which looked like that quite nearby to mirage itself there. I don't know how that works. I'm not a scientist. I'm just some idiot who makes silly videos. So he's looking around for witnesses. So any other people who'd seen this house? And he found one, Mr. Cobalt. Mr. Cobalt, Cobold, Mr. Cobold. In 1912, he saw the house. He was coming down this road on a horse and cart 
with the local butcher, right? There were two of them in there. They were just coming down and all of a sudden, the temperature changed. It got really cold. It tends to happen that, doesn't it? Temperature changed and the horse got scared of something and the horse bolted, it went <coughs> The butcher fell off. Uh, Mr. Cobalt managed to hang on and he managed to get the horse under control. But just as he's trying to control the horse, he's just looking over and Oh, what's that house over there? And he sees the house. Now, he describes the house, let me find this, as red brick, Georgian style again. Six flower beds in full bloom uh, in the front garden and a kind of mist, a mist. There was a mist which enveloped the house. So he'd seen it as well, that's another witness. And what's weird is Mr. Cobalt's granddad he saw it in 1860. He'd also seen the same house, but not in this same place. In the same little village area, but not in this exact same place. So that's three witnesses we've got already. Sorry, four if you include the little ten-year-old girl who shouldn't be out with a teacher after school. And people still see this house to this very day. Just back in 1998, there was a girl a girl who ran into the Bennett Arms, which is a pub which I haven't found. I haven't looked for it, I'll be honest with you. Um, but she ran into the pub, she says, I've just seen a house, I've just seen a house. Now why that would spook her and she'd have to run into her pub crying, I don't know. Um, but she went in there and the all says, oh, it must be that, home, that house which isn't really there and it keeps coming back and then it keeps disappearing. So they all run out looking for the house and she takes them to where it was and it's not there anymore. The house is gone, the house is never there. It's only there when people go past it and then it just disappears. There's no photographic evidence, there's no video evidence, there's no audio recordings of anyone who's there at the time when they find it. I think it's all a load of bull. And then there's another witness, Mrs Jean Batram and her husband. They were driving along here in a, in a Citroen C3. Show the Citroen C3. <laughs> Same as that, but brown. They were coming along here in that, and they saw this lovely house, and she says, oh, we'll have a look at that on the way back. Drove to where they were going and came back. The house wasn't there. The house had gone. Now, she hadn't heard of this phantom house um, until many years later, she picked up a book called The Ghosts of Suffolk, and it mentioned this house in there. And she says, I've seen that. I've seen that house. So she got in touch with the book writer, and told them her story, which is the reason why we now know her story. But she is the one who named it the uh, a Mirage, the, um, where are we? Ruffham Mirage, that's what it's known as. And she's the one who came up with that name. So let's get into the nitty gritty. We've talked about the eyewitnesses. Let's talk about the important stuff. There's a local historian called Phil Right, and he's, had, he's really looked into it, trying to find a house which was in this exact area. Now, there is a slight bit of evidence that there might have been a house once upon a time called King's Hall. But there's very little evidence to back it up. Um, but that is quite odd because we're on King's Hall Road. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, there might have been a King's Hall, but there's, it's not on any maps. And what exactly are people seeing? Is it a mirage? Is it a mirage? Or are people experiencing some kind of time slip? Are people going back in time and seeing something like a time warp? Like, I don't know, like some time machine thingy. And they are seeing a house which was there once upon a time, but it's not there anymore, which would be really weird. Something else which is weird is they're saying it's a Georgian house. Now, a Georgian house would be from like the 1714 area, uh, era to 1830. That's the Georgian era. Now, if that was the case, the granddad who saw this in 1860, surely he would know about a house which was in the area called King's Hall or any other big mansion-y type house. Because it was only 30 years later, surely he'd have known something about it. He didn't. So there is a local map from 1885. There's no house on there. It started snowing. There is a map though, which is from the 1700s, which shows that there could have been a house. There was a house, okay? It basically shows a coat of arms. It's like a picture map. It's not like a proper detailed map. It's like a coat of arms in the middle of a field. Now the coat of arms 
what I'm being told could mean anywhere within a three mile radius there was a house there so that doesn't really tell us anything but there could have been a house there. Some investigators thought they'd go all around the ground looking for evidence of, uh, of a house. They did find red brick. Now it was described as a red brick house. They did find bits of red brick but th they were just being honest, they weren't getting carried away. They said it's probably from more modern houses because in any field, just like this one behind me, you always find little bits of red brick. <laughs> like that one. So these investigators then decided to try and find the exact spot where the house was supposed to be, going by everybody's accounts. Now, they found the wood. It's either that wood there or the one over there. There's two little bits of wood. I think it's this one because they said it took them down a little track down the middle of the wood and there is a track going down the middle of that wood but it's private, we couldn't get in. I wanted to film down there um, but we couldn't get in. And they went there and they found where they thought was the exact spot and they found this bank which was described in one of the other accounts and they started scraping at this bank and they found the foundations of what looks like some kind of house. Now they needed permission to get that excavated, they were going to look into getting that done and nothing on the internet tells us anything after that. Whether there was any excavation, whether they did find a house there, I've no idea and it really spoils the story because what we want to hear is that they did find a big Georgian house in that wood. Spoiled it, didn't it? Mm -hmm. So to keep the story alive, I think we're going to have to stick with the story that it is a house which has come, keeps coming backwards and forwards through time. And as someone has suggested on the internet, maybe we should get some guy with a hat and a big long scarf uh, and a Dalek to go back in time, called Doctor Who, get him to go back and check it out and see if there was a Georgian house there. That's the story we'll stick with. I personally think it's a load of <laughs> I've never heard such rubbish in my life. I like the story. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, it, it's the first time I've ever heard the story of a ghost house. I'll give it that. But it's stupid. It's a stupid story. No. I'll give it minus 10 out of 10. It's rubbish. Five. Five, okay. I believe it. You believe anything. <laughs> Right, thank you very much for joining. See you at the next one on a much warmer day, hopefully. It is zero degrees today and it is freezing. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> All right, calm down, calm down. Get in the car. Come on, no. Mazzy, just get... It's only a little puddle. Just get over there. Go on, you can do it. I can't. Well, I'll go first, shall I? Yeah. There, I've oh, made it. No, now you've got a cat's well, If I can make it, I've you can got make it. Legs. Well, you have to get to this bit. You don't want to be there in deep bit. Get your foot right to the edge. Give me your hand. Ah! Ah! There. <laughs>